everyone and welcome! So you may hear a little bit of barking because we have uh, deliveries coming in and so the dogs are seeing like the, the Amazon truck and they're going nuts uh, and I wish I could get that excited but exciting news I do have new uh, streaming gear coming in so we can do even cooler streams maybe stream outside catch more areas of the shop so yes all new ethernet cables coming so of course we have our early arrivals we have dave beck bill frazier and a couple more you guys uh, coming in i know wednesday is a new day for us we were doing monday nights for the longest time uh but i figure you know what i'm usually in here prepping these projects for you guys to stream at night so why not just run the cameras, right? I mean, you're gonna see way more face plants this way. <laughs> and today is gonna be no different. So if you guys caught the post about what today is about, last week we looked through our rotary phone, everything looked pretty good. And I was so curious that uh, I'm just seeing the way the stream is going. It was hiccuping uh, earlier, so I, I, I got my eye on you there. Uh, so last week, we checked our rotary phone, and this was an automatic electri electric. Uh, now, I think it's kind of like a mid to late 50s type of rotary payphone. And immediately we saw that a lot of the coin mechanisms were missing, but the wiring looked pretty good. Like it, it had been gone over rather recently, I would say within the past decade. So stream was over and I kept looking at this phone and I started to look at the parts to order to convert it for home use. And some of it is non-returnable. So I figured we probably should test this before I order all these parts, you know? So I went back and forth with Rich via Facebook. Which, Rich, if you're watching, get on Discord. That's where we're, doing, where we're doing all these discussions. There's a special channel called Payphone Upcycle, where in between streams, we talk about this project, we throw out ideas. So definitely jump on there. It's a real-time interaction. I'm on there every night and a lot of times during the day too, reading your guys' comments and going back and forth. So. I hooked up the phone via Rich's instructions and lo and behold, I got dial tone. I can even dial into the phone. Now the phone does not have a ringer, but when it rings, you know, internally, you can hear kind of like a dial up connection type of sound. And you can also hear ringing in the form of ticking, like so you know that it's ringing and I pick it up and I was very surprised at how clear the sound was. The handset looked okay. You know, the speaker systems all looked okay, but the sound was really crisp. So the only thing I can't do is dial out. I keep getting that operator message that says, the number you're trying to dial is not in service. So that highly points to the fact that I probably need a pulse to tone converter, which is on its way. It's gonna take about two weeks to get here. So I figure, well, let's keep moving on, right? So on Discord, we started discussing like, okay, so we're gonna get the payphone working and I'll paint it like a minty green. So what are we gonna do with it? Are we just gonna like hang it on the wall and call it a day? It's not a very Rachel project, right? We always turn it into something else or do something cool with it. So going back and forth, I figured, well, payphone needs a phone booth of some sort, you know, and I couldn't find any 1950s phone booths. So I decided, why don't we kind of build our own and turn it into like, a phone booth slash workstation. So it's something that's very compact that if you run your business out of your house, you live in an apartment, you kind of need to, you know, condense, this might be something that, that works for you. Uh, so Bounty Hunter is here and he's getting some bad memories. He's like, yikes, an old school desk. Yeah, I wonder why we got this. You know, I'm, I'm gonna explain myself. I have some splaining to do. And uh, Craig Dickerson is here. Hello, Rachel. Hello, chat. That can't be a school desk. There's no gum stuck underneath. Well, thank God, guys. Thank God. Because I was like, you know what's worse than gum? Oh, don't mean to gross you out. And I'm going to gross my own self out is boogies. Boogies under the desk. So I kind of turned it over like white glove style. Glad to see no gum, but super glad to see no boogies. Ew, 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 ew. Well, wait, don't kids that age eat them anyways? Like, yeah, so I think there wouldn't be any boogies on underneath the desk, so we're safe from that. So anyways, I started to try and find an idea of like, how are we gonna build this cool phone booth that also doubles up as a workstation desk? So 
If we all know 1950s, some of my favorite furniture design is the Atomic Age furniture. And this is like the Jetsons, right? So why don't we come up with something that's reminiscent of the Jetsons? So if you don't know what Atomic Age design is, it was very popular in the 1950s going into the 60s because the US was making huge advancements in rocketry, aviation. And so a lot of these aviation and rocketry stylings started to infiltrate not only fashion but the home and cars and that's where you get those beautiful fins on your Cadillacs a lot of the home furniture was like resembling kind of now probably the best example and so though some people may argue with me but I think one of the best examples is the a Studebaker Avanti. So if you haven't seen what a Studebaker Avanti looks like, definitely check it out. It looks it's like looks like a jet plane, right? But when you sit inside and you look at the switches above, they're very much like airplane switches for lighting and different controls and a cool airplane feature that it has is that the interior light rather than being white you know like when you turn on that light and you're like oh and you're driving in the dark you're like turn it off turn it off well there's a reason that why airplanes instead of white have red because red illuminates really well and it's not harsh on your eyes so if you're flying at night it's not going to cause that glare and difficulty for your eye to adjust to a bright light and a dark light so it's much safer so the Avanti actually has that feature so check out that car it's definitely on my you know maybe to, to purchase list but you know it's, it's got too many zeros on the price tag just yet you know so we might have to find a, a fixer upper you know so Arthur Paley is here awesome Arthur Paley is a insane musician he's awesome uh, pure inspiration my dream of decades of build a copy of a British red booth looks more realistic now yep uh, we're not you know we're not going British style for this particular build but boy did I look at a lot of British style booths because I don't know we should probably do something some like Doctor Who type of inspired build next you know maybe like a Doctor Who workstation or a tool cabinet that's like a Doctor Who thing where it's got tons of compartments and just when you think you're done with the compartments it slides over and a whole other thing of compartments come up so that's been on my mind all right Arthur's uh, reading my mind here a little bit uh, and then we have oh it's gonna be tough uh, I may mispronounce we have Alt Yos Yosman uh, from uh, Twitch and um, so he has joined us there and Let's get started at what my idea was. So anyways, back to the atomic, atomic Age furniture. Now, the one on the right I thought was kind of cool because this is like a mid-century modern, more modernized, where it's got elements of our Atomic Age furniture, which is very simple, sleek design. It's got those spread apart legs, kind of like diagonally type legs, uh, and nice curves, very flat surfaces. This was key with the Atomic Age furniture no like super crazy woodwork baroque style things so we have two options I'm really liking that fold out type of bar situation there but instead we could put a payphone in there and that would make a really great fold out workstation so here's my idea now we can either uh, well, we can either build it from scratch, which I've done, you know, you can kind of see here like this brown thing over here. I've built an entire wraparound unit from scratch, uh, so we can certainly do that or, you know, since we've done that before, is there kind of a kind of a neat way to do this? And so that's where I came up with the thrift store mashup. Oh, yeah. And so what I did was like, all right. The top portion is pretty easy to figure out. We can build a hutch, right guys? Just build a hutch that a flap will fold into. Okay, I, th I think we can handle that. Eh, I, think, I think we got that. But how do we handle the bottom part with the, the drawers? Well, I went to the thrift shop and I tried to find the most simplest like little nightstand or little dresser thing. I don't know what this is. Uh, you know, sitting on the right there and try and find something with the flattest surface, which is, I gotta tell you guys, super tough to do at a thrift store because when you go in there, all the furniture is super heavy and very Baroque. It's something like, you know, King Arthur would walk around and be like, I shall take thee, I shall take thee. Gorgeous furniture, 
all these details, but nowhere near Atomic Age. So if you're looking for something that's a starter piece for Atomic Age, definitely hit the thrift store, but try and find something either obviously from the 1950s would help, but it fits no dice like it was in my case, Another era is 1980s. If you all recall the really shiny lacquer, kind of flat, maybe some simple curves 1980s furniture, that's going to be another good starter. So I highly suspect that this one on the right here comes from the 80s. And I think because it's mostly flat, we can work with this. We can work with this. So now you guys are asking, what the heck is up with this school desk situation going on right here? Please don't take me back. You know, most of us are so happy to be have left school. You know, we're, we're done with that. Let's just not go back in time. But if we look at the Atomic Age furniture, and there's no real example here in these pictures that I picked out, but the legs, especially on the right, look very metallic. And you can see that this is suspended off the floor, whereas our dresser is kind of not. And we would have to add on to it to make it a little bit taller, or else this is going to be the shortest little desk we've ever sat on. So we want to heighten, put some high heels on our dresser. And so that's where this comes in because the legs are metal. They kind of do this type of situation, which is 1950s. And imagine if we paint this gold. Now, if you Google pictures from the atomic age, you're gonna notice a lot of furniture with metal legs. That's a huge thing. So I was like, hmm, can we match these two up together? And will it look good? Or will it look like Rachel just hot glued some school legs on the project and it looks horrible. So we're gonna figure that out today. So, <coughs> all right. So first things first is we have to get these legs off. And if you take a close look right here, uh, you can see some WD-40 uh, going on here because the idea, and let me switch back to this view, is that I want to take these legs and shrink them down. We want this to be the shortest possible or else the dresser is going to sit too high. So before thinking about how tall we're going to build the hutch, I'd like to get this bottom half kind of situated so for us to get a good like eyeballing, you know, to see what we're going to do. So instead of removing the legs, why don't we shorten the legs first? And I've already pre wd 40 them. So let's see how, you know, if that helped, if I can negotiate this here pretty, oh, didn't take much. All right, guys, see, it's already, it's already coming down. So what if I make this, cause this is pretty long already. So what if I make this the shortest possible? And let's retighten. Will it go into a hole? And that's the tough part. Like, how do you know it's in a hole? Oh, I guess you can kind of feel it, right? So let's uh, get that situated. All right, let's do the same for this guy over here. Much easier than our coin vault lock. All right, let's wiggle it around. And I'm going to start tightening it a little bit and see if we can feel it catch. This one's a little bit more rusty on the inside. So what we're going to do is mock this up today, and then uh, I'm going to remove all the legs, sand them down, get them ready for our brushed gold paint. But at least we can start mocking up the size and uh, figure out how tall we want this hutch to be and whether or not these legs are even going to fit, you know, on the bottom of, I mean, I eyeballed it. I didn't have a, a tape measure or anything with me or measuring tape. I just happened to be walking by the thrift store of running other errands and I was like hmm you know because I was thinking about building it uh you know from scratch but I figured this is a project and a method of doing it that any of you all can do it hit your local thrift shop and let's see how we're going to modify the furniture to make it look like no one will even be able to tell that this came from two different pieces now I did try and find a hutch uh to put on top so we wouldn't have to custom build one but all the hutches were very ornate and it was just not gonna work. So we're gonna build our hutch unless I happen to go back there and see a hutch that works. So we are looking at about three, uh, 13 inches and five eighths. Five eighths, yes. And 
about 16 inches. So I would say to be exact, 15 inches and three quarters, you know. So you can see that I got this side off already and there was a little one little screw holding it here in the front and now we just got to do this side and so i went ahead and started to drill out our you know our rivets and oftentimes you just drill it out and then you kind of chisel or it just kind of pops off anyways well these keep spinning in place so we're gonna have to dremel and what i do is create a slit and then i start to really thin out the metal on this side until it's so thin that we can chisel it out so there's three on this side to do once that's done we can get these legs off and see how well they fit onto the other unit see what we got to modify you know for that so let's see i think what i want to do before hitting the dremel is just use a slightly bigger bigger drill bit and where did it go off to it be in my face so just to kind of uh you know make it more amenable to what we're gonna do and rich is here good morning rich todd i love this stuff great show yes we're gonna modify thrift store stuff because I got a secret for you all. But first, let me uh, let me do some drilling here and let's see which view is best. Uh, maybe something like that, you know, kind of can't see what's going on. Uh, but I also got this going on because, um, you know, yeah, my head's cut off. Sometimes that's good. Some people say that's good. We don't need to see your face. But uh, so for this view, hopefully these, uh, these furnitures are kind of tall. So maybe it, it'll be a little bit better. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll move cameras around uh, if we have to. And if we have to cut anything, I am testing out a, let's see here, if I can figure out the view, this view right here. There we go. That's the outside view. Uh, in case we need to cut any wood, any filler pieces, I'm rocking that. So let's uh, go back to this view, which I think is, is better. And Bill Frazier saying the thrift store queen. You better believe it. You better believe it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Bounty Hunter saying, but no 160 inside. There was no money inside here. You're, you're, you're very true. I was hoping for some uh, lunch money. All right, let's go for it. All right, so all that did was just widen the hole of the rivet. This is spinning like crazy, but it just weakens it a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do now is plug this guy in right here, and we're gonna start to thin out. Now, this is a little bit of a process, so, you know, I don't get offended if you need to go grab yourself a drink, make another coffee, uh, you know, feel free. It's about to get a little loud, so watch your guys' uh, volumes there. Oh, that's a tight fit. Let's see. what we got going on if it is uh good enough out right here and it is because it's hot it is hot all right and i like to use this screwdriver this is kind of like my beat it up no matter what a uh, type of screwdriver and don't mind my pink hammer yeah like girls that like to do stuff always get pink tools <laughs> for presents <laughs> it's just the way it is but you know what i make all my tools work there is no free ride in this shop so pink, purple, whatever, you working. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit loud again with the hammering.
All right, and we got it to pop, and I'm just going to, that was a little hot, but luckily I have shocked myself, burned myself, I have no digits. I am like prime for committing crime, you know? I could get away with anything. <laughs> I just need the personality, the right personality to uh, commit crime. And Larry's saying, no mama, it's, it's what it's saying. But yes, we learned last time that with a little bit of divitude, you know, you strike a little bit of fear into your projects and they listen. All right, we're gonna do the same thing and then we got one more. Oh, this one's kind of tough. again one idea I had was I should probably put a camera on my head right so you guys see what I'm seeing all right so here we go again loud noises people whoa that was my hand I don't need that thumb anyways all right I think that needs a little bit more negotiating so we're going to negotiate the uh you know the addendum now guys yes so for this I'm probably gonna have to flip the desk over or else I'm gonna have to come over on this side and totally block your guys' view so and uh, bounty hunter saying Dexter doesn't have anything on you <laughs> I just need the shop covered in plastic though so I can create the perfect murder and have no fingerprints and get away with it so I'm sure then if you're a Dexter fan you've heard uh, Showtime brought it back so I already watched the first episode I won't say anything about it uh, but it was a lot of fun so yes if you haven't caught the new Dexter definitely catch it and um, Bounty Hunter is saying uh, are you sure you aren't the dentist from Little Shop of Horrors at this point probably I'm ready to work on some monster teeth and Bill is laughing uh, and uh, Dave Wells is saying I can't watch today I'm working I know bummer right so these are up anyway so you don't have to watch live you can always come back and if you are on discord we continue chatting about the project so hop on there and chat in real time <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
such a tiny channel that it wants to ricochet on you, you know, but I held it steady. I was like, oh, uh-uh. Here we go, people, again. Some loud noises. Whoa. And uh, except, for, except for when you hit the fingers. Then it's, it's actually pretty soft. And maybe I would move my hand down. And there we go, guys. I think we have leg freedom. And we can get rid of this school desk portion, which I don't know that we're going to use. So, But I'll put it aside. You know, it makes a nice little cubby. So, there we go. Now I'm going to put this somewhere where I won't trip over it. So, temporarily, I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it over here. Yeah. All right. So, I'll be back, people. I'll be back. I'm going to go over here on the side. My little junk pile here going on. All right. And let me move this desk. And we're going to try and get the other piece on here and start kind of looking at how we're gonna put the legs on it and make it look real. So, uh, Bounty Hunter is saying, I haven't seen the new series yet, but probably wait until it's done running to pick up Showtime for a day or two. That's true, I speed watch when, when I can. Oh yeah, that way you pay one month and then done, or do the, the trial. Uh, ooh, was that money? I don't know where it rolled off to, but I'm sure gonna look for it later. That might be some money. Oh, there's definitely some stuff going on. Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh, no, it was just the studs. Here I am thinking I'm finding some old rich money, but no. All right, let's see if I can eh, negotiate my way. All right. Now I'm just going to make sure we have enough space for this next thing right here. Put some of this stuff kind of out of the way so that was our little ratchet and here's kind of the allen set that i have uh, we're probably probably done with that so i'm just going to put them on a stool over here and watch it hopefully it comes back all right Here I go. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right. All right. I figured this would happen. So I will present to you from behind the curtain. I am the great wizard of Rachel. And what's behind the, uh, <laughs> the dresser here. But it looks like we are going in and out, in and out. So, let's see here. Let's see if we're back. Um, Diva versus school desk. I know who wins. Oh, yeah. Bill Fraser says, yay. Uh, Bounty Hunter says, I have read all the novels written so far by Jeff Lindsay. So, I've read none of them. So, I gotta get on that. Uh, all good reads. Um, fingers do make for excellent sound absorbers for hammers. They do indeed. I know from experience. And Dave is confirming that the stream went wonky. Um, and what's the red thing inside Bill Frazier is asking? So I'm assuming the stream is back. Uh, what's the red thing inside? What red thing inside? Oh, I know what that is. So it clearly has been inspected. I do have uh, quality inspectors here in the house, two of them four-legged little furry cats and I guess they left uh, their their toy in here to mark it as theirs. so they're like you know what when you finish this this is for us this ain't for you that's what that is so somebody definitely left uh, uh, they started moving in they started putting all their their toys in there so Carl James is here he says hi Rachel Bye. down uh, clearly and uh, so the idea here is we're trying to go for an atomic furniture uh, type of look. Now this is almost there. It's missing the drawers. The drawers are nice and flat, which is nice. We don't, I don't think we have to do anything there. But 
this is pretty much there, but we can take it a step further to remove some of this decor. I have an idea, guys, and I wanted to like run it by you. So I'll be right back because this is a big project. I pretty much have like everything spread around. So I'm gonna be like jumping in, in and out. Uh, so let's see if like, is this view any better? Like right there? Oh, that might be better. Yeah. Oh, you guys can see. So let's see if I turn it a little bit like this and put some of this stuff away so I can actually maneuver it back so you guys can see what the heck it is I'm talking about. Put these guys here and go like this. All right. So I'm gonna have some cleanup to do because I hear a whole bunch of things falling out that way. So we're just gonna use this uh, Rachel head cut off type of view uh, and see what I'm talking about. So I figured, is there a way to kind of eliminate this, you know, situation here? And uh, Bill Fraser, some of you are laughing. My situation, Gordon um, Gabari is here. Hey, so I went ahead and this is quarter inch plywood and I cut it from scraps. That's why it's not sized properly. See, it's like too short, but I figured we can just use a whole bunch of scrap rather than cutting up a nice big piece of quarter inch plywood that I can use as the backing for this thing, right? Then I gotta go buy another one, right? So let's just use some, some scrap for this. So the idea here is if I fill in this situation and then use wood filler over it and i just went out and bought a nice new tub of wood filler right it'll be totally flat and the drawers will come and meet so now we got a completely flat front so i'm thinking of uh, going this direction so um you know and i cut up quite a few strips for us to put in you know like that and I mean, we're almost there in terms of strips. And we can get that nice atomic age look going. And uh, Gordon is saying he's an old school phone guy here. And I do notice the stream is going kind of like in and out, in and out. Um, so I'm hoping I don't have to restart it because if you restart it, then everybody has to try and find a new link and it's a whole thing. So we're going to try and, and go. Uh, and this is also simultaneously streaming on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook on Gearhead Diva or YouTube or Twitch on Gearhead Diva. So if you're buff, definitely jump to one of those other platforms. It's one of the reasons I stream to three places at once. So, so that's the idea for the filler strip. So I was gonna like pick your guys's like brain on this one. If you think the filler strips are a good idea, that way we get a completely solid front, much like these atomic age furniture situation. Like if you look at the bar on the right, there is no decor, it's just flat, flat, flat. So we can do something similar to that and uh, flatten everything and then this will just look flat. So. Herein lies the other problem. And I wanna to switch to this view where we can probably see this a little bit bigger. And I am not, let me turn this around and be like that. Oh, this is about to go over, isn't it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is, all right. So, and you guys are saying, oh, Gordon is a old phone guy. Awesome, yeah. So we're trying to build our phone booth for our 1950s rotary phone or rotary payphone. Uh, last week was the breakdown. So if you go on the YouTube channel, you can actually watch that live stream if you wanna see the teardown of our 1950s phone. Uh, Dave Beck, is it windy there today? Big time windy. And Larry is saying the, F, uh, the Facebook stream is working better. So yes, we're getting like, um, Wizard of Oz camera that we have outside has actually fallen down quite a few times. Uh, that's why I put a cheap webcam out there. And so it's, it's you know, I try to kind of duck it down near the ground so it doesn't go anywhere. But, you know, we'll see. That's in case we need to cut anything. But I think we're going to have our work kind of uh, cut out for us. Uh, I actually am thinking now I may have to move this uh, workbench to be able to work kind of in this up here type of situation. So let me see what we got going on here. Whoa. Whoa, back it up, back it up. Oh, that's the most it'll back up. All right, so we'll, we'll re-shift, re you know, as needed. But anyways, if we go ahead and fill all this situation here, now we have a completely flat front. 
Uh, and that's easy enough to do. That shouldn't take time. And then you sand it flat and then you can paint. Good thing is that we are not staining. You know, staining is a little less forgiving. Painting, you can hide a lot of, you know, snackoos that way. So imagine putting our, you know, you can already see, see my hand disappears back here. So it's, this situation is what I don't know what to do with. So imagine this flat. I almost feel like filling this in right here. So that way it's just one flat piece. I don't know. So that's one idea, but let's see if our school legs fit up here. Let's see here. All right. Ooh. Oh, and there goes the mic. I hit you guys. All right. So let's see if I switch to this view right here. Is that any better? Probably not. All right, so what we may have to do for this portion is lose the workbench, which means I'm gonna be on the floor, which is fine, people, right? We've, we've done worse. So the idea is, can we fit this school thing here as is, or do we have to modify the, the bottom here by removing pieces that have probably been glued on for decades, which is gonna be interesting, right? So I think next things next is, uh, this is probably a great time to use the facilities grab yourself something to drink because what i'm going to do now and i'll leave the the cameras running i won't put you on intermission i'm going to lose this table which means a lot of the gear is going to have to move uh and all the cameras are going to have to come down so give me a couple minutes to work on that and you can either you know watch and and uh, laugh at me as i do this because it'll be quite entertaining uh or you know uh Use the facilities and, and uh, grab, grab uh, coffee, grab an adult beverage if it's, you know, you're having that kind of day. Listen, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. No judgment. So here I go. I'm going to start just moving things uh, around. So let's see. We're going to need these. So I'm going to put them there. And we're not going to need the Dremel anymore. So I got a clear room to my left to be able to do this. I'm going to switch you guys to this view. So, let's see it here. So this is one of the reasons why we're getting more cabling, more views, so that way we never have to do this type of switcheroo. There's always going to be like a camera facing, you know, how we ever, however we need it to face. So we don't have this uh, fun downtime. But let's see, I have this uh, table locked somewhere. So let me figure out where. Here it is. And let's see if we can move it. All right. There we go. Now it's gonna move out of the way. Hopefully I don't hit the mic. Oh, I am going to hit the mic. Let's see, move this guy over here. All right. And it will disappear out of view. Very a la, um, well, not, not as graceful, I think, as like a, you know, a magician. But, you know, I'm working on it. That's what happens. I'm the magician's assistant trying to uh, work this out. All right. So I'm just making sure all of the cables are not, ooh, I was about to pull this right off. So why don't we rest you right here? No cables, no cables. All right, let's go for it, people. Let's see if I can move this thing. Oh, there goes that camera. All right, so Let's see what this view is. Oh my gosh, I got I got like all this room. So uh, I work out of a one car garage of which half of it is used for personal house storage. You know, we, we all got that problem, right? So it's actually a 10 by 10 space of which the gear takes up half. So it's actually a five by 10 space that I work out of. Yes, outside and in the foyer. So my shop kind of spreads everywhere. So I have this little stool situation here and I think what I'm gonna do is put my switcher here that way we can go from camera to camera and i'll kind of lay this back here and let's see i'm going to bring the uh you know piece here and see kind of how we're looking and then what about this 
through right here. Oh, did we disconnect? Yep. So here I am, and here's my bag of um, foam. So we are actually making a castle. That's why I like bagged up all this foam. And there's a secret one over there. So let me get that out of the way. We can see kind of like the edge of my workbench, the spaghetti wire that I have going on here. So we'll just, uh, you know, leave that as is. Uh, it's more convenient for tripping on, you know, so you don't want to just like have it all cleaned up and then there's like no tripping. So we need a trip and uh, ugh, have more opportunity for that. So let me grab our leg here, see kind of where we're going to end up. And then I will move the camera as necessary. So I'll put that leg kind of there and see if I can put our piece over here. This is pretty heavy. So Dave Beck is saying, talk about reality TV. Yes, uh, most sh uh, TV shows will show a gorgeous shop and all this stuff. No, no, peeps, I work the way you, you guys work. It's, it's the same thing, right? We're basically moving one thing to one corner and then having to move it again. All right, here I come with this gigantic. Oh, and I'm maneuvering so carefully. Oh, 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 oh. And singing the moving carefully song. It's a platinum hit, yo. There we go. Guys, this might actually be a good view, minus all the, the spaghetti. And maybe if I bring you guys in. Oh, oh, that's even better. Check that out. I can, like, I'm cut out the spaghetti. That way people like coming in aren't like, what the heck am I watching? That's a tripping hazard. OSHA is going to come after me. I'll be like, woman, what are you doing? All right, so let me move this situation over here. All right, so the idea here is, and now everything's like in a different spot. So, there we go. So I think this needs a cleaning. It's like no longer registering <laughs> when I touch it. All right, so for this, kind of weird. You're not really seeing what I'm doing here. But let's uh, see if we lay the um, legs on top. Hello, why you don't want to work? There we go, so this one works. All right, so let's see here if we lay our our thing on top and all I'm doing is just going to my streaming software here making sure nothing got uh, unhooked uh, the audio is still going all that uh, fun stuff all right so it looks like we're good people looks like we're good all right so this is the front right here you know my big old head all up in your way and back here is the back <laughs> just for uh, orientation so let's see what happens when we stick our leg our legs up in here and Bill's like very entertaining now I know you guys want to watch me struggles oh, that's the most fun part all right let me um that's part of like this this holidays thing it's just to kind of clean up the shop and when I started streaming I didn't know if it was something I was going to keep up with. I didn't know if anyone would even enjoy it, you know? So, okay, we got some fitment issues in that. Overall, the leg will work with this, but we got to figure out about moving some of these components. Um, so worst case scenario, uh, say we remove these guys, and so I'm just going to uh, put this here and move this forward so you guys can see. So say, you know, we were re to remove these triangles, this would sit like this. We have such a tiny little overhang. On camera, it looks like it's over an inch, but it is not. It is literally maybe about half an inch. So option one is to remove these, this, 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 and just lay this in as is. We're going to put a support board down here and have a tiny bit of overhang. But guys, I have another idea which has high potential of causing instant regrets. So I know how much you guys love uh, when we up the ante for <laughs> things going completely wrong. I'm just gonna lean this back for you guys to see what I'm talking about. And uh, go, Larry is saying, go for filler. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
the, uh, I know I'm gonna regret this and I'm kind of like, don't know if I should even say it, but one of the things I'm thinking about doing is literally to chop this off at here. Chop off this leg and chop off this leg. And the reason being is that that would give us a smooth bottom because this clearly looks like a dresser that Rachel's gonna stick some legs on. So I am really thinking about this and at the very least, if we were to um, remove this bar right here, it would give us the clearance we need to be able to push the leg more forward. So guys, how do we remove uh, very old glued on stuff? Well, there's a couple different ways of doing this. So one way is to use vinegar, acetone, heat gun, uh, or even a steamer, which I have, you know, so we can try all those methods uh, unless you guys just want to stick with the old yield overhang technique and leave good enough as is. But I think we might be able to get a cleaner look by chopping off uh, this, this bottom portion and not having those legs because we're going to have like legs and then another set of legs behind it, the metal legs. So I think it'll look a little bit weird. So uh, let me just manually scroll down your comments here. It got stuck. All right. So it looks like the stream is still going. So hopefully it, it uh, evened out. So let's see here. Let me move some of this screen stuff out of the way. There we go. All right. So that's kind of like where I'm thinking about going with this. And so let me just uh, clean off. I know what this weekend is going to be. It is going to be shop cleanup day. So let's see what we got going on here. I'm just going to like head on over to the uh, workbench over there and grab a drill and some bits, some bits, some bits. So let's see. Now these look to be ye old uh, square, which aren't really old because, you know, they're, they're still used today. I use them all the time. So I'm back at the bench looking for the bit and let's see if we can start to see how loose maybe maybe we're, we're gonna be lucky here Larry is saying chop away I knew you would <laughs> Larry's like go for it so let's just start to remove some of this stuff oh almost got it There we go. It's magnetized, but the magnet doesn't seem like all that strong. <laughs> so, and you see that we are working with like an MDF, like a part of cold board situation. So clearly, this is not the old, you know, 1950s pre type of furniture where it is solid wood. I mean, it's tough to find furniture like that these days. All right, everybody's saying chop away. So the strategy here, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna sit like this for a bit. And let's see. All right, so it looks like we're down to two views. I probably have to reset uh, everything. But we're just gonna keep, we're gonna keep going. All right, so we have these three out. Oh, and I lost a bit here. And what else can we take out? Let's see if we can take these guys out. So I figured this be would, would be kind of a neat uh, exercise in that, listen, you all have thrift shops near you. You can watch me uh, flail about and then you'll know how to do it better. And modify your, your own stuff. Because I will tell you, after I remove this where did the oh, that would help to have the bit on it there we go and one more the bit sure loves these little guys they're like oh you're so sexy let me hello my name is bit my name is screw let us go on our first date. They're already like kissing on the first date. Did you see that?
there needs to be the chaperone that puts the balloon in between them, you know, just to make sure there's no funny business going on. But they're jumping right to the funny business. And the bit's like, I'm leaving this thing and I'm going to move in with you, screw. All right, so clearly I am losing my mind. It's probably all this uh, old wood, wood glue smell. So what else do we got? Is this, oh, that just came right off, guys. Oh, hopefully this won't be so bad. Oh, that just came right off too. Okay, so those weren't glue. This is going to be a problem because it's way, it's instead of being a straight cut, it's got more areas for glue contact, which makes it much tougher to remove. Um, but there is a bit of wigglage. Now, I'm not gonna lie, uh, anticipating you guys wanting me to take the most difficult route ever, um, I went ahead and added some vinegar to this to see if I can loosen uh, this situation. So I'm gonna grab like a, you know, like something to put underneath here and see if we can pull this thing out. So one moment as I, let me try and fire this up again one more time. Bear with me, people here, for a second. All right. There we go, it just needed a restart. So now we got all of our scenes back. It did not like me moving around the shop. It was like, knock that the hell off, all right? So now that we have this view, ugh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys down. So sorry if you kind of feel wasted as I, as I do this. So let me just bring you guys down to my level. There we go. So that might be a little bit better for you guys to see. What the heck, and you can see the mess of the shop. I basically have to shove all of our personal stuff um, to one end of the shop so I can uh, film on the other end. There we go. So, ooh, I got some blue mood lighting going back there. You can see my steam unit over here. This is another potential project right here, this red thing. It's a mailbox, an old mailbox. I have the key for it. So that might make kind of, I thought about making some kind of like electronics organizer out of this thing right here. So I'll take, I'll take ideas uh, and uh, more mess wiring. This is a guitar made of parts, which I need to, yeah, I know some of you are like, shut up, on with the build, you know, but I like to show my things. I like to show my things. So, all right, I don't know what is heavier, the payphone or this thing right here. So clearly this needs a stud. So I was at a car show and there was this wonderful artist that makes really cool things out of car parts. So a lot of you guys can guess what a lot of the, the parts are here. And, um... Uh, I need to put it on the wall somewhere, but it's really, really heavy. And I thought, you know, Rachel style, are we really just going to hang this on the wall? We got to make a cool display for it. So get your minds thinking, hop on Discord, start putting some ideas together. And yeah, some of these things are down and I even have it sitting on a guitar stand, <laughs> you know, because it is, it is a guitar. Um, so no, this is not a, a mailbox. I actually have an old mailbox. It's somewhere else and it looks a lot like this. Uh, so no, this is, uh, who was right? It was Bounty Hunter Breaks. He was right. Uh, so this is an old fire alarm type of thing. And I don't know, I thought maybe we can build something fun, either like a tool organizer or something that sets something off and, and goes crazy. So ideas, people. Uh, and Gordon is saying, you need a cameraman, friend. I do, indeed, yeah. And uh, Kuzo Customs is here. Rachel, I have a 1950s Bell telephone phone booth I picked up at the flea market in New Jersey years ago. You can have. Now you tell me this? After we've done all this, now you tell me you have a phone booth? Really? <laughs> Kuzo Customs. All right. Um, that sounds too easy. Like, we must punish ourselves even more. But that's awesome. I wonder how big those those things are. I don't know if you know off the top of your head how big those 1950s, I'm just reaching for my screwdriver, that's why I look funny. There we go. <laughs> um, 
you know how big it would be. I'm trying to keep this kind of like compact so I can put it in the corner of a room. Um, all right, Auto Tech Andy's here. Hey, Auto Tech Andy. I'm greeting you with tools. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> and uh, he's saying, cool. Uh, and Bounty Hunter Breaks is saying, is that a guitar for a guitar player or clutch? It's a clutch. Uh, so it doesn't play. It's just uh, decorative, but it's still pretty cool looking. So let's see what we got going on here and see if we can do this. No, no nails or anything on this side, right? All right. All right. So let's see if we can do something that will kind of start getting it moving. Maybe I should start on the corners. Guys, I think it might budge. Now, the vinegar, I sprayed it on, uh, put it on with a syringe and let it soak. It's been soaking for about maybe 30 minutes before the stream. So, oh, Cruiser said he'll send me a picture. Awesome, awesome of that 1950s phone booth. I know a lot of offices are beginning to use phone booths now uh, as like little cubicles. That's a hand. All right, so I think I'm budging the bottom and not much budging the top. So what I'm gonna do is re-vinegar and bust out the heat gun and see if we can get it to nego start negotiating with it a little bit more. Although I did get a little more movement up here and that's where I'm watching. I'm kind of like watching the, the up here situation. Um, wrong way. This right here to see if this piece moves up. Uh, if it doesn't, it means we're damaging the, the bottom more than we are accomplishing what we want to accomplish. So I did get a little bit of upward movement on this end right here. So let's go back to this end and see if we can get a little bit of upward movement. All right, no upward movement there. So I'm going to be right back and I'm going to grab uh, some more vinegar as well as the heat gun. So here we go. Now, how to get to these different components, I don't know. I'm going to leap like a gazelle over the, you know, workbench right here. So let's see what we got going on. We have acetone and we have our stuff here and let me grab the heat gun which I believe is on the other side I'll be right back be right back there we go oh no I had already anticipated I would need it so it's right here so let me get it uh, good to go and there we go all right so you can see some of my bottles you know over there just in case I need more and I can put our mood lighting there we go. so that you guys choose the color. Shall it be blue? Shall it be, you know, whatever color? And Anthony is here. He's saying, good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Anthony. And Gordon is saying, try a flat pry bar. Now, I do have a tire iron. I do have a flat pry bar. I will be back, people. Good idea, Gordon. I'll be right back. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and re-vinegarize uh, some of these joints. So not to ruin my good cooking vinegar, you know, I'm going to pour it into a separate thing. You know, I need that. I need that for delicious meals, right? So, and nail polish remover, which I heard is another really, really great way to do it. And it all really, like, what works best, it really depends on the type of glue. Each glue has a solvent that works best for them. And I'm using this tiny, tiny little syringe situation right here. And um, these you can buy on Amazon, super cheap, a whole bunch. You know, they're great for just, uh, you know, different kinds of projects. And I actually like to use them for hydraulics projects and uh, like little robot arms and things like that. So what you can also do is overnight, um, let the vinegar soak through and that should start eating it. But again, that's if it's, you know, the correct solvent for this type of glue. 
Now being the age that this is, which I don't really know the age of this furniture. I'm not like a furniture era connoisseur. I would imagine like 80s, like you know, the 80s. So all I'm doing is just kind of doing the same thing and letting it seep through the cracks. And then we're going to hit this with a heat gun. Because if anything, I figured this would be a good exercise to go through in case you guys ever want to modify uh, thrift store furniture because people always say, oh, it's cheaper to build it yourself than to buy it. Not true. I have found this to oftentimes not be true. Uh, my wraparound cabinet, true. It was much cheaper to build something and I got way more space out of it than to buy it. But I have found not in all cases, sometimes it's cheap, people, it's cheaper to buy, you know, but the cheapest I have found is to take some really cool, if, and if you want something unique, thrift store furniture and modify it. So that's what we're doing because this cost me, I should have haggled more, but it cost me 25 bucks. So even if we mess this up, it's 25 bucks. It's not like it's hundreds of dollars or anything like that. The school desk cost me 10 bucks. So we're 35 bucks into this. So if I completely mangle this by accident, it's okay. You know, it's okay. And, uh, oh, gel is here. And uh, Jell is saying, hi, Rachel, just checking in. Got my booster yesterday, and I am so sick. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, the booster's tough. The booster is really, really tough. Um, and then a bounty hunter is saying, are you planning on saving the kick plate, or would you consider using a vibrating cutoff blade to cut that rabbit joint? I'm really thinking about it. So what he's talking about is this, this joint right here. I'm probably, if we don't have success, because this is a tough joint, there's a lot of glue uh, surface area right here. And somebody else brought a, up a good point about the dowels, and that's Gordon. He said there might be some wooden dowel pins along the middle. Yes. So again, the more glue contact points we have, like I am so short, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, so the more um, glue contact points we have, the much tougher it is going to be to remove this piece. So one of the things I may end up doing is um, slice and then do it on the other side as well. Um, if I can remove these two pieces because they're so tiny, we might actually have success removing these two. Then just take a, a blade and just, you know, from this side right here, just go, you know, and then it'd be nice to be able to just pull this kick plate off. Um, like one of the other, you guys were suggesting, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and uh, I don't take Andy is saying I would have broke that already. I know I listen. The temptation is there. The temptation is like really, really there. But my big concern is looking over here, this particle board. If this were solid wood, I think I'd be a bit more brave in what I'm doing. But the fact that it's not, I'm like, hmm. And of course, there's always the option of us just building this, you know, from scratch. But I thought like a thrift store mashup might be kind of neat be a kind of neat thing to do and you just can't beat old construction of drawers they were just so much better all right we're gonna let your vinegar soak while I hook up the heat gun and let's see did I get you sufficiently and some people just let it sit overnight and it's it's good to go and the vinegar seeps really really well All right, so I'm gonna put this in a place where I, maybe like right here, where I'm not going to step on it or drop it. And I have the heat gun ready to go. Let's see what happens. And uh, Akuzer is saying his phone booth still has the old um, rotary mounted inside. And uh, Bork and my dog is saying that sounds like a really cool idea. Oh, and Kuzer has the, uh, the dimensions of his booth. So that's good to know. 29 and a half inches by 30 by 83 high. That is a tall booth. So I think what I'm gonna do is concentrate heat on this corner right here. And for now I have, oh no, I got it on high. I'm, seriously, I'm in business. So let's see what happens. And this is a just like a take your time thing. If we don't have 
any movement on here, I think I'm going to jump to these back leg situations right here. Because really, where push comes to shove, as long as I'm able to remove these back guys here, we're going to have about a, um, maybe even less than a half inch overhang to the legs. Uh, and, you know, that's not a big deal once we push it against the wall and no one will see it. fire extinguisher him handy oh yeah that's uh, on the other side of the workbench all right so let's see if we've loosened any glue and oh i should probably get the pry bar but let's just see what's going on here now i'm able to drive this much oh there's movement there's some movement there, guys. So let me grab the pry bar. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, how am I going to get over there? I'm going to have to jump over the table. Here I go. I'm going to jump over the table. I'm running. Pry bars, where are you be at? Stick it through the drawers. Dig in through this. I see, I need a camera over here so you guys can see this, uh, this crazy situation. I am glad none of you saw that. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. A studio needs an expansion. I do. <laughs> yes, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, you must uh, know rabbit maneuvers and gazelle maneuvers to work in half. Yeah. This, uh, this uh, garage and this, uh, these builds aren't for everybody, you know? So I'm just gonna go ahead and first of all, move myself so you guys can see what's going on and see if we have better luck with this pry bar idea, which I think we will. So, let's see. Yes, so everything is moving except this piece. So it is looking like we may have to go in and put nuts on it with uh, a cutting tool. So, oh, but this side is moving, people. Let's see. Oh, let me move myself. Yeah. Hide in the action. Oh. Oh. I broke the support. Although it is, it's moving. It's moving. All right. It's wiggling. So what I think will happen is we can either cut it or, let me get rid of myself altogether. <laughs> we can either cut it. And what broke is just these little, um, this little quarter inch piece right here, which we can either just remake. So it's not, nothing major. What I don't want to break are these two, uh, you know, these two things right here. So um, option one is to let this soak in vinegar for a lot longer, you know, and then come back to it. Uh, or option Two. That was option one. Option two is just brrr, saw straight down the dowel. I don't think you can break the wood glue, um, is what Jell is saying. And, you know, he's, he's probably right. Uh, Anthony is saying, like your patience, I always resort to just BFH, big fine hammer. Oh, yeah, now you can replace fine, I'm sure, with, with another word. So I know what you mean. Uh, so, yes, I am like super patient with this stuff but at the same time I want to get it done so let's see if we can because I think this is going to be a problem with this um with this type of joint it's just too many glue spots uh holding it in see if we can kind of like saw through right and for this the first thing I'm going to do is maybe go in gentle rather than with like a sawzall where we might you know hit certain things We'll move to that if we have to, but oftentimes where it's exploratory, I don't quite know how it's going to go. I kind of like 
starting with a hand tool and then moving on to something worse, you know, if we have to. So if I can cut along the seam, that actually would help out, I think. Um, uh, Bork and my dog is saying, use a sledgehammer. Yeah. Um, listen, it's, it's, uh, I'm thinking about it. So, and this might also just uh, get it enough to where we can start prying it. Like if we're loosening, we're beginning to loosen all these glue contacts, it might just give us the upper edge that we need. But it is cutting rather easily. We're almost halfway through. So yes, I know this is the slow method, but I figure it's the safest, you know, the safer method as well. I got this. Hold my beer and hand me that chainsaw. Oh, it'll get there. It'll get there. And Bork and my dog is saying maybe use a screwdriver to separate the wood. So we've already tried on here along the bottom. That didn't work out too well. But as soon as we start making cuts here, we can just start trying to separate uh, some of this. And oh, just making sure there's no hidden screws. broke my saw. I'm wondering if I'm hitting a piece of metal or some kind of like metal dowel or something right in here and that's what's causing the issue. Huh. Because look, that just like totally broke my saw. So I'm gonna have to get another, another saw blade. So all right, so this is beginning to uh, talk back a little bit and we all know what we do to projects that talk back. You know, it, it's, it's not pretty. So let's see if we get, it's starting to budge a little bit more. And as we move further, what I'm gonna do is stick a little bit more vinegar now that we can access more places. It's gonna penetrate much better. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And uh, Gordon is saying, use you molding saw. I imagine my molding saw. And Brooke and my dog saying, maybe the pry bar will work now that I've cut it. So I'm gonna maybe try and also pry from the other side rather than the back here. So maybe a small hand saw, like a miter saw. Um, yeah, we could do kind of like a cutoff wheel type of uh, situation here. Although the tool handle is going to be a little bit, a little bit interesting to fit around. So let's see, I have this pry bar and now that I have it more cut on this side, let's see if the theory is correct. And maybe there is something that's kind of holding things up here. And let me jack my, myself over there one more time. And where, where did the hammer go? Oh, right here. And the electric, where's that electric cut saw? Which one? Which one? I have a few. Yeah, so. Woohoo, we got someone new on Twitch. Welcome, welcome. Uh, cutoff wheel. Oh, the cutoff wheel. Oh, Dave has an idea. Um, do you mean my miter? Uh, not, not the miter, the, um, the Dremel we were just using, because I can come in and do like a slit here and a slit here, slit here, slit here, and that would like really do it in a very gentle manner. And I just realized I have more, more screws to remove. And let's see what we got going on back here. Maybe we can start moving some of these back panels as well. See here, I want to like bend over you guys. We got going. I'm gonna save all these. Uh oh, oh, it's run off again. Look, it's run off with its screw girlfriend. There we go. Where's the chaperone? All right. So I think we have. 
have all the screws out of this guy right here. Right there. Let's see if there's any movement. Oh, a tiny bit of wiggle, like a little loose tooth. Let's see what we got going on here. Got a thin kind of situation back here, so we're probably better off doing this. And I'm gonna have to go in from a kind of a funky angle. So I don't block you guys. Oh, let me put my knee so it doesn't slide back. small gap. I'm having trouble getting it in any type of uh, gap to start separating it. Although there's a nice gap over here. So, guys, it's doing it. All right. So that worked. And there is definitely some glue. I'll bring it up to you guys on it. See? So it looks like the, the vinegar works. It's just, you need to give it time. And I think because we have a lot of like glue, 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 this one's probably gonna have to be drilled out, I think. Um, so that one's gonna be a little bit tougher. And uh, Dave Beck is saying Dremel's a big brother. Yeah, I gotta find him, he's in a drawer. Um, and uh, I also just posted it on our Twitter page. Awesome. Uh, and uh, Carl Rigstad is here. Super mama. Heck yeah, that's what we're trying to do. It's hammer time. Dini, 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 dini. Um, oh, and uh, Bounty Hunter Briggs saying, just strike the piece directly with the hammer. I'm wondering if we can just boom, guys. Just like boom it out this way. Let's see, right? Let's try. <gasps> Breaks are awesome. Look at that. It just flew right off. Yeah. All right. So all we have to do is um, sand it. And guys, we could do another test fit with the legs and see how much it really kind of drags out here. And we may not have to worry about this. And then what I'll do is take wood, fill it out up to here, and we might be able to get away with this. Uh, so Mountie Hunter Breaks saying, is there a screw at the base inside that cleat? I think what you mean is if I were to turn this around, is there a screw coming from the other side? And that is jacking up our game. That might be the fact. So let's try and get this guy out first. And we're gonna see if Bounty Hunter is right about this hidden screw from the other side meant to jack up Rachel's game theory is true. Longest title for a theory ever, but all right. So, oh wait, there's there's still some, some screws going on here. Hold up. And then we're gonna grab all these screws here in a moment so we don't lose them. And pardon my giant head, pardon the giant head. All right, I don't think there's anything left. All right, oh, I lost the screw again. See, this screw is trying to, is, is troublemaker. He's, he's ran off with a whole bunch of chicks. All right, watch out for this, this bit I mean here. This bit is running off with a whole bunch of little screw chicks right here. Watch out, ladies. He's a ladies' man. There we go. Go back in your house. All right, here we go. Two acts of hammer, and you are done. Let's see. Whoa, wrong, wrong thing. All right, so let me just double check the screw situation. Let me put my eyeballs on for this. Hold on. Make sure I didn't goof. That's out, 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 out. Pardon my giant hand. All right, so this one needs a little more negotiation. So maybe if I pry it a little bit with the pry bar, and then we're gonna go back to the um, hammer to go the hammering. So let's see here. Because the vibration alone might be enough just to loosen it, so we can do bounty hunters a hammer technique. Right here. Oh, I broke it, but that works for me. 
works for me. All right, let's see if we can hammer it out. Not yet. And Bounty Hunter is uh, clarifying. I was asking about the cleat block on that back foot support. This cleat block right here is what I, I think you mean. Oh, to see if there's a screw. I don't think so because this one didn't have one. So I think that's what you mean, like this piece right here. And so I think these two are screwless, you know, from the underside. And uh, all right, let's keep going. And uh, I think the vinegar was working pretty well. Now that we have more exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and vinegar you up a little bit. I don't think I vinegared him as well. Giving all the other sides the look. You don't get as much love. All right. All right. Let's do it. It is getting mushy though. But this one is definitely not wiggling as much as the others. So this one's on. Probably um, ancient Rachel glued this because I'm an over gluer. So now I'm kind. I kind of deserve this. I really do. I kind of deserve this. So I met my match in a previous life that has done this to me. All right, it's getting better. Because if we can get this off, we can do another try-on of the legs. Guys, it's happening. the excitement people I'm gonna use my knee to kind of like hold this there we go so bounty hunter is saying need to send you a mallet you know what I do have this I bring it out only for the worst negotiations you know when it's like wartime and you have to bring out uh, Thor to negotiate so I do have this which you know might not be so bad to use on this thing let's see Although this, this might be too big and I don't get like a good strike. See, I strike from the side rather than the very center of the mallet. So maybe I might stick with this guy. And let's see what happens if I just uh, scooch myself over. I can get out of the way. There we go. Get out of the way, lady. All right. So let's see if the same thing. I'm going to use my body weight to hold this. Oh, yeah, people. All right, so we have all this cleared up. So what I'm going to do is clear all the tools from here so we can uh, try our legs on and um, see. Oh, 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 really? Bounty Hunter? Mm, he's, he says this is not big enough. This, Or if you want to follow me around, the only drawback with that is for small projects, it's really tough to get up close and see. So I'm just taking a water break here. So it looks like there's um, a couple more stream hiccups uh, going on. So if a lot of you guys are experiencing it, then it's it's probably on my end. I should have probably like start, restarted the modem or something like that. Um, and I don't take Andy goes, Aye! and a bounty hunter is continuing to, you know, talk some smack on my hammer. He said it is a baby sledge. All right. So we need the, we got the baby shark. Now we need the da -da 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 mama shark and the daddy shark. Although the grandpa and grandma's uh, sledges probably, not only do they come with firepower, they come with the wisdom too, you know? So those are always good sledgehammers to have. All right, so it looks like we are back. And yes, it looks like YouTube is the one that's being the culprit today. Not so much Facebook, it's usually Facebook. Let's uh, see what we got in terms of some fine legs. Mmm, these sexy legs, people. Mmm, mmm, that's some fine school legs. So. We can see that it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to switch this view. There we go. Let me get this centered there. There we go. All right. So we can see, let me see what kind of overhang we're talking here. I'm going to go get my tape measure. I'll be right back. And uh, to your guys' advice, the damage to 
our thing here has been rather minimal, you know, like very minimal things going on. Uh, what I would do is obviously this is quarter inch right here. So the last thing we want to do is screw these legs onto this quarter inch kind of like wiggly type of thing. So via pocket hole screws, I thought about cutting out a, um, a piece of plywood, filling this with a piece of plywood, and then mounting this on top of that piece of three quarter inch, uh, quarter inch, no, not three quarter inch, sorry, 0.75 uh, plywood board. So all that hammering, it's got me winded. <laughs> all right. So Bounty Hunter Breaks is like, yeah, I'll get you the Stormbreaker from Thor. Yeah, so this is just like the Thor starter hammer package that I have apparently. So th there's a better one. So here we have about, like I was saying, I'll put my eyeballs on, um, 15 and I would say 3 quarter inch just to be kind of safe. And then here we have, let's see, about like 13 and 5 eighths. So the overhang here is... Da, da, da. Yep, it is half an inch. So option number one is to leave all as is. Put in our support piece that will go from here to here underneath. Put that support piece in and mount this on and leave that tiny bit of half inch overhang. And by the time you stick it, you know, by the wall, probably no one will see it. Plan two is to indeed cut this thing off. That'll allow us to push this to where we need it to go. Then we have the option on top of that, once we get the center piece off, let me just move this out of the way and go like that for us to see. Once this is off, um, you know, it'll leave like a, a cavity here. Now, I'm trying to look ahead. I don't know how funky it's gonna be with this leg here and this leg here, or if we need to chop and have this be the bottom of the cabinet here. I'm on the fence about that, so. Let's see here. Gordon is liking option two, which is to saw off the, all this excess. You know, we'll put our support board regardless. Now, just by using fingers, it seems to me that from this surface here to this surface here, there is a three quarter inch space. So that means that we, when we put in our board, it should sit flush with this bottom edge right here. Theoretically, it should be perfect. So uh, you all are saying Sawzall. So if that's the case, I'm gonna go get it. We can do some uh, some Sawzall. Uh, and uh, Anthony is saying, I'm feeling guilty. I've eaten two donuts so far as you have labored on this project. Yo, save one for me. Save me a donut. Don't be eating up all the donuts. I love donuts. Oh my gosh. Um, I like the apple cinnamon donut. When I was little, I liked the jelly filled ones. As you get older, those are kind of tough to eat. You know, my stomach is just like, mm, it tasted good going down, but everything after that is not so bueno, right? <laughs> See, we family, so we can talk about them, them bodily functions together. You know, it's, it's, it's all good. So I like uh, apple cinnamon and I like the plain glaze. I don't know what it is about just some of the plain flavors, just kind of like if you need to dress it up too much, you know, if the dough is good, you know, you don't need that much more on it. You know, it's like the Auntie Auntie Anne's uh, pretzels. Those are really good. And see, I'm, I'm in the Philly area, so we're very picky about our pretzels. Yeah. And our sports teams as well. Yeah. We have a reputation. <laughs> and um, Gordon is saying, Sawzall with wood blade to cut it out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leap like a gazelle over the workbench again. And I'm going to get us our Sawzall with a wood cutting blade. And we going for it. We going for it, people. There is no turning back. So I'm going to put you in this view so you can watch the hilarity. Oh, good. Not much hilarity to watch. So I can fall on my face and it won't matter. All right. So here I go. Oh, and you guys will hear me opening the drawers. Opening the drawers. Sozo, where are you at? There you are. And let me grab a blade for it. Here. Oh, coming back up and over the table. All right. All right. There we go, people. Let's set this up here for us. All right. I'm getting all toasty. There. 
like lunchtime, you know? It's lunchtime. I should have like a big old Philly cheesesteak right here. Eaten and sawing. So let's see my uh, wood blade situation. This guy's a little old here, as you can tell. He's kind of gross looking, so let's use him. He'll be our, our victim here. And let's see. Doing this without my glasses. Giving a little tug, a little wiggle-a-roo. We're all good. And now I'm gonna plug it in. Put my safety glasses on this time, like the for for real one. And I'm not gonna take it all the way down to where it meets. I'm gonna take it about three quarters and see what happens. Now, because this is one of the um, I don't want to call it like lower end. Um, oh, new follower Niels is here. Welcome, Niels. Glad to see you. You have entered our thrift store mashup, which is going, I give it like a C minus right now based on my skills. Um, all right, so that's kind of like the, the idea. And I think that if the screws are going this way, I'm going to imagine there's a dowel. Uh, let me get rid of myself for a sec here. There we go. If the screws are going here, I'm going to bet if there are dowels, they'd be here and here. So would the strategy be cutting through the dowel or kind of like between the dowel and the screw? Screw. We can do it both ways and see what happens. So because this side is the higher side and this side is the lower side, I'm going to flip this around so I can well, keep watch here and I don't have to jump over on this side where I'm going to knock you guys down where the cameras are. So let's spin this around like a carousel. There we go. Oh, I put cheesesteak in the brain of Dave Beck. He's like, I am going uh, to his local joint, Fred's Philly Cheesesteak. I imagine that's a local joint. Uh, and Bounty Hunter saying, I'm thinking now dowels. I'm going to interpret that as you're saying to go through the dowel to where we think uh, they supposedly are. Auto Tech Andy is, I once hammered a whole door out of plywood to hang it on a shed because I did not have the right tools. But what came out so good, it was a tight fit. Mm -hmm. As long as it works, it works, right? And then, oh, um, that's actually a good idea. I cut the rabbits off and then just give it a whack. So kind of like where I was uh, starting, but probably not right at the seam. I'm going to cut just a little bit here so I don't like accidentally. What I was beginning to say is that the um, starter kind of sawzalls vibrate a lot. That's the biggest difference between um, higher quality tools and not to say that this is not a high quality tools at all. It's done so many great jobs for me, but it vibrates. It's much tougher to control. The, the higher end have better motors. They run a lot more smooth. So you'll see a little bit of a, the struggle is about to get real here. <laughs> Exploratory cuts commence. So let's uh, do this and we're going to use Bounty Hunter's uh, strategy here. Um, if I had better skill, I would go right along this scene and be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, but I don't. So I'm going to just kind of inch it in a little bit and scooch this a little bit more. Here we go, people. There we go. Let's do it. And I'm going to just kind of rest it. Actually, can I get... There we go. I'm going to try and rest my shoe. I'm trying to rest this part of my shoe on here, but we'll see how that goes. And I actually may have to straddle this because it's going to move back. Let's see what happens. Oh. And the blade came off. That's a first. All right. I'm just seeing if that's a crack in the blade thing. Let's switch blades. And before we change the blade, we turn it off. And from working with air tools, when I turn a tool off and I'm about to do something on the business end, I also hit the trigger in case any build up or anything. You know, sometimes there's air still in the air tool. Obviously, this is not an air tool, but you know, I still out of habit do the same thing. So let's try and do this again. All right. And it could be something in here needs to be tightened let's do this and that's a part of the vibration when things vibrate so much things get kind of knocked loose 
but yeah, so that's not coming out. Let's try this again. And you guys saw that it was like shifting. So this is not gonna be pretty, what I'm about to do. Not, not very late luck, I'm gonna admit, but I'm going to go like this, right? Oh, you guys see where this is going, but it is what it is, right? Actually, no, because then I'll have to cut like this, and that's very uncomfortable, and I'm sure to take my arm off. So instead, we are going to put, ooh, I know. And I'll give you guys this look so you see the atrocity of what I'm about to do. I'm about to put this guy, be super heavy, over on this side right here. I need like a shop Igor, like a little shop helper. Be like, here, lay down right here. Keep this thing from moving. And that might be enough, guys. Let's see. Let's see if that's enough. Rotate it down. That's another good idea, too. Um, so we're going to give this another go. And then what uh, Bounty Hunter is saying is to rotate, rotate this down because then the top part will be on the floor more surface contact it probably won't move as much so let's see what happens now and let me grab my my glasses because we saw this thing uh wanted to fly away on us now it makes me wonder if that there is some kind of screw going on because that's the problem we had not on this side but on on this side with our cutting so here we go again oh i'm thinking it works on wi-fi you know it doesn't have to be plugged in, right? Wi-Fi power. There we go. Um, so here we go. All right, we're almost three quarters of the way through. And I always like to restart rather than in the middle of a cut, then it really like can uh, ricochet on you. All right, so that's cut, I, oh yeah. So that's cut, I would say 97% through. Now I'm gonna cut the same thing on here, maybe give you guys another view. And let's see, it's gonna wanna move this way, so. Let me move. Our little fire thing here is not doing much. Not doing much. There we go. There we go, people. All right. All right. Oh, I'm going to put my foot inside here. There we go. Till I get a shop Igor, we're just going to have to uh, improvise. We are, I would say, 60% through. Let's try again. So, it's a little crooked, the blade. I think the shoe has budged, but we're almost there. Famous last words. All right, so again, we are about, I would say, 96% through on this one. Come out. What is it with this project and, like, tools hooking up, you know? It's like, oh, I don't want to leave the wood. We, we best friends now. All right, so let's see, since we broke the, uh, the marriage there, if we can start to get some budging and some movement. Let's see. There we go. Now that we don't have the rabbits, now it'd be nice to cut further down on here, but we won't be able to do that without really not, you know, marring our edge that we totally need. So what I'm gonna do is now go from this side and see if I can stick a pry bar and start scooching it this way. Let's see if that, that will work. Now, Bounty Hunter Breaks is saying, hit it like it's a cheating boyfriend. 
Well, we already had the bit. That is a ladies' man right there. So we're going to hit it. Got tools trying to get together and hook up. All right, here we go. I mean, it's kind of negotiating. All right, not really. So I'm gonna go from down here. go through the side here. Oh, there we go. I'm totally up in your way. Oh, I don't watch the dovetail just slip out after all that. It better not. It better not. <laughs> no. All right. So what is happening is um, where I was cutting with the saw actually is, is kind of a doing, doing a good job of like bending and stuff. So I wonder if I should repeat that here because the problem is, although we have sawzall cuts that go down almost to the very end, this, like, there's some kind of situation going on here where it is like really not wanting to actually, guys, look at the budget. I'm going to go for what, I'm going to take your guys' advice. And I think what Bounty Hunter meant was to go like this, right? So I'm going to put this view like this, right, guys? All right, here we go. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. Right here. See this? It's moving this way. So it is working. And we've cut it enough to kind of like, I think, give it its budgery. So let me get this out of the way as much as I love hammering with the Sawzall. So the piece as a whole is beginning to lean back, lean back. And yeah, this thing is super glued on. There's, this is definitely like Rachel was here. Like, you know, Quantum Leap back in time, Rachel was here. like there though people look Oop, if I took my head out of the way you can see what I mean look at that it wants to come out it wants to but I was wondering can I just pull it up but no I cannot I'm wondering if I give it just a little bit more over here right on the corner where it's hanging oops see it is like leaned forward even if we kind of like break it you know like meaning break it like right around here just this piece obviously not this piece right here but again these shapes are very simple if we kind of boo-boo something we can probably mimic the shape I'm not too worried I almost feel like I can like sit on it you know like just sit on it and it'll, it'll break. It'll. I forgot to check guys. Um, the way a bounty hunter was talking about these cleats things uh, right here. Let me just check and make sure that here from the other side is not like obvious screws. And here I am trying to bend this thing against um, screws. And Anthony's saying, smack it like a stubborn ball joint. Those are the worst. Oh my God. And ugh, 
yeah, those are some of the worst to remove. So it is, it is almost there. I'm just gonna like duck down right here and see if there's any type of screw situation going on. There's not much light, but let's see if I can, you know what? Come here, a little blue light. I'm gonna put you to use other than just some fine mood decor. Let's see what's going on here. So there's this and this but they do not interfere with that. Oh, okay. There's one screw that might be interfering. All right, so I'm gonna flip this around and see if we can remove it. Now I can't tell for sure, you know, but it might be. Okay, so, and now that it's this way, we can also try and hammer it, you know, this way, like Bounty Hunter is saying. Uh, but there is a screw uh, right here, right there. Now, I don't, I can't tell if it goes through that piece or not, but uh, let's find out. And this is a regular type of situation, so, like, like a screwdriver. Let's see here. Let's see how easy this is to remove, or I'll grab the, uh, the drill. the longest screw ever depending on the length of the screw we'll know if it was going into the piece above and no it wasn't look how tiny that is I'll kind of put it on my cheek so you see that's like way tiny so that's not going anywhere so I'm gonna put him back because he's unique kind of than the others and I'll lose him so let's just kind of put him back and he doesn't have to be screwed in all the way and kind of be here All right, let's continue our let's continue our festival of uh, hammers. Hammer time! Nee, 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 nee. Dee, nee, dee, nee. All right, stomp it with my foot. Ooh, yeah. Let's stomp it with my foot. There we go. Stomping it with my foot. There goes my little. Let me uh, grab my little guy here. All right. Move him out of the way. Here I go. Here I go. I got my steam unit too, in case we, you know, we need to bust that out. I've kind of been leaving him here. And ooh, let's see. Will Rachel break her leg? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Here we go. is the butt hammer. <laughs> the butt hammer. Yeah, no. Kind of looks like I'm trying to go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, guys. Yeah, when the stream goes that way, then we know, we know we got problems. We know we got problems. So, here we go. <laughs> just had an idea guys what if very carefully I take my Dremel and I make a slit all the way across that'll be enough to kind of get it to break off and whatever excess I have I can just sand down smooth to meet up this surface so I think I think we should try that I think we should try that and it's already in this position so let me grab my dremel which is over there all right all right all right there we go and bill's like get angry yeah oh i'm getting angry now Okay, Kodiak is like, um, oh, hey, Kodiak, haven't seen you in a bit. Welcome back. He's saying it's getting interesting. Indeed it is. When I start with the potty jokes, then we know. Like I said, we're family. We can, we can exchange potty jokes. <laughs> uh, and Carl's like, the butt hammer's probably not the best idea. It's like, of course, 
Carl, the, the voice of reason, he's like, mm. <laughs> snap that glue. So, I think what I'm going to do is this Dremel idea, because I think with a slit, as long, I mean, even if it goes through, like, not even a quarter of an inch, I think it's going to be enough to just get it to um, uh, do. Uh, jigsaw, I thought about the jigsaw. Um, I think that's going to be tough to kind of fit in here. So, I think this is just like, zoop. Uh, and it's gonna make exactly that sound effect. Um, and so let's see how we go with this. Let me get my other glasses on. Here we go. The one with the actual eyeballs so I can see. All right. All right, and let's clean it, you know, so I can actually see. There we go. All right. This is gonna work better than the butt hammer. I should probably change the bit, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna change the bit to like more of a cutoff wheel situation because this is gonna take us all day. So let me do that and also get a dust mask because I see like little fine dusts uh, and some of these old woods you just never know, right? So it's best to uh, mask up and not be all dusty in the nose. All right, this might be a little hot pitch. Let's see, is this the only one I have? We need a tiny, tiny little screwdriver here. Put him back, make it a little bit easier. Budging? Probably not. I believe I have another one. Just gotta dig around for them. Oh, yes, I do. Right here. All right. So, how do I do this? There we go. You guys can see. Some tool changing action, oh my gosh! It's getting like super exciting now. Oh, this is like a little flathead. See, Rachel changing bits. Oh yeah. I'm gonna use this big old one. Oh. Washer. This side. Carl James, he's saying, have you considered brake clean to attack the glue? You know what? I hate to say that probably would work. It works well for other things, including curing zombieism. <laughs> so this is a, a flathead versus a Phillips. So let's see if I got one of them lying around right here. That one was just a little bit too, too fat. So, let's see, focusy focus. Helpful. The camera's like, I have no idea what I'm looking at anymore. This, this whole thing is atrocious. I'm just going to put everything on blurry vision and spare y'all what this chick is doing. Putting you guys through. All right, and my little wrenchy, wrenchy maru thing. All right, as long as you guys are getting a good laugh, right? Oh, and I said a dust mask. I'll be, I'll be right back. Let me grab that. Where is it? I gotta, you know. Oh, there it is. All right, I'm, I gotta go over the table again. Here we go. All right, all right. All right, dust mask. Like I was saying. 
fine. We were doing the 360 shoots for a while, um, but I think a lot of people kind of got confused about spinning the camera around and how it works, so I went back to this. But we do have more cameras and longer cable cables coming uh, so we'll be able to actually stretch cameras to a whole other 15 feet yeah that's just basically all, all we're getting but that way like there's less camera switching and less like me disappearing and things like that so there we go there it's like oh she's gonna be quiet for a little bit yes yeah there we go <laughs> rejoice all right here we go Much I'm gonna speed you up just a bit. Whoa, there we go. Negotiate a little bit more. All right, we got breakage over there. So let's see if we can get some uh, breakage here. Oh, guys! Guys! <gasps> All right, I have no idea why the Dremel helped because clearly it didn't even break along the line of the Dremel. I don't know, maybe it just got tired. It was like, oh my God, this chick, you win. I, I can't take this chick anymore, make her stop. This, this is just going on too far long. And sometimes guys, that's all it takes. It's just, it's not about having better skills or like better tools. It's literally like who can out annoy the other person. Like if I can out annoy the project, the project is gonna be like, 
I give up. Like, I am much more strongly built than your skills. Like, your skills are shabby in comparison to my construction. But damn woman, like, I cannot take A, you're talking. You know, A, you're beating on me. I'm done. So, yeah, he just divorced me. <laughs> this little piece is like, ah, I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> so, I'm just going to try and crack off this little guy here. And, so, oh, I'm in the way. Look at that. It's all about me sometimes. Right? So, and that, that, like one of you were saying, that little rabbit thing better not come off. Because if it was that, <laughs> the whole thing, um, I'm going to be pissed. Right. Cruiser comes saying, geez, you could do furniture repairs as a side hustle for Flamor and Ran again. A Flan again. <laughs> Flamor and Ran again. I'm not even saying it right. So, I can probably almost pry up. And, of course, I'm, I'm got to be in the way. And, and get this guy up. But for our purposes, guys, I think we can see if the legs will now fit better. And it's interesting that this piece right in the middle here, the heck is up with me? All of my big old head's always in the way. This piece here, and I'm gonna tilt him up. See how the middle portion never wants to be removed? I don't know, I suspect there's something there. But I'm gonna stick a pry bar in there and see if we can start getting these last pieces up. And rather than that pry bar, actually, I changed my mind. This, um, this guy has a much sharper little, little edge to try and get in there. Let's see what happens. All right, not that hammer. I'll get the other hammer. Rubia. Rubia. All right, see, divorce sometimes is a, is a good thing, you know, in projects. Projects like, I'm done. Done. <laughs> Had it with your yapping. God. Yeah, there's something going on here, people. Let me bring you in, bring you in on this action. All right, move. There we go. Some kind of like, but you can see that the vinegar did penetrate. See that all this darkness, that's all the vinegar. So like, honestly, if we really think about it, um, oh, look guys, I'm gonna show you what's going on. I think, I have a theory and we're gonna see if I'm right about this theory. Oh, there is a nail here. Is, I think I feel a metal. Yep, there's a some kind of staple situation going on. And that's what was hanging us up. And that's why on this side too, uh, the, the other side over there is having the same problem. Or right in the middle, it's, it's just not wanting to give up. That's the marriage counselor going, no, you two deserve each other. Talk it out. Talk it out. Let's see. Yep, right there. And I'm going to see if I can push this thing for you guys to see as I knock literally everything down around me. Right there is a nail. And that's kind of what was jamming us up. So, let's uh, move these pieces. I'm going to back you guys on out just a tad here. And I'm going to do the same on this side because then we might be able to slide our legs and who knows, maybe we won't be able to, we won't have to like do too much craziness on here. We'll get the legs on and see how it looks. See if we really need to remove and sawzall these legs. Let me take a look here. And for that, I like to sawzall long, you know, everything long and then uh, sand it down. All right, give it a good little grip. Right around the same spot we're having some issues so I'm wondering if it's another nail yeah so whatever this glue is it seems like vinegar was the solvent to remove it and I hate to say like like I was saying had I vinegared this overnight we probably would have had a much easier time but then that wouldn't be so entertaining you know you guys wouldn't have watched me struggle 
I would come in like an expert and I'd be like, guys, this is how you do it. The vinegar. And then I would take uh, this little screwdriver and a hammer and be like, boink, and the piece would just fly off and boink, 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 boink. And it'd all be done and be like, you guys would be like, wow, she's like, good, you know? Nope. Instead, the night before, I'm like, how can I paint myself in the absolute worst light? You know, like, how can I really, really, like, struggle? <laughs> um, but yes, there is a staple. So there's staples going this way, you know, one on each side. And that's what was really jerking us around and why we could not remove the piece, why we couldn't budget forward or backwards or anything. So that explains much. So let's see if I can just uh, hammer this little piece out here. Right there. And the uh, project smells nice, vinegary, clean. All right, so there's a small crack on this piece right here on the other side, but it's really, really tiny. And uh, this piece is a very small piece and easy to fix, but the fact that we're putting a much larger support piece probably won't have to do anything uh, with it anyways. So, guys, let's see what happens when we put our legs. Our fun, sexy legs. Let's see here. All right. Okay, so one of the things is, although the frame here fits, this part, curved part right here is obstructing here. So we wouldn't be able to move the legs all the way up like this, but certainly it would fit right here, especially after we put our piece in. So guys, that that's kind of like a perfect fit. We have zero overhang. In fact, we have some room back here, finally. So I'm thinking we're good. And all I have to do is see there's a little bit of a clearance problem. I'll give you guys a better look. Better, bit of a clearance problem where this rabbit situation is. So what I think I'm gonna do is now that we kind of have a plan for how we're going to attack this, I'm going to go ahead and kind of chop this little rabbit off with, you know, a Dremel. And that should give us the clearance we need to put the legs, actually, no, just a little bit of, uh, of negotiation. I actually already did it. So I won't have to do that and get the legs on there. So guys, we got the school legs to pretty much match up and all I'm gonna do now is just cut a piece of plywood that fits this area we're gonna use pocket hole screws and glue lots of glue lots of glue so that way the next person that tries to upcycle this project will be like who the heck used so much glue like it you know you don't pass forward only good stuff sometimes you got to pass forward uh revenge revenge yes so we're gonna uh, glue it up for the for the poor next person that tries to to work on this so the idea is like what a bounty hunter uh is saying in that what we're gonna do is let me remove these legs we're gonna add a three quarter inch piece of plywood because this right here is three quarter inch so we got a three quarter inch drop. So if I lay in a piece of plywood to cover this, it will be seamless like that, right? So once the plywood is in, then uh, I can cut along right here, right? We'll cut and cut. And now I plan to cut a little bit taller, right? And then we're gonna, because this is MDF, it'll sand pretty, pretty fast. And then sand it down to meet, uh, you know, our plywood that we're gonna put on here. So just kind of as a um, test, I found a piece of scrap plywood that is almost the size of this and I'm very tempted to use it, but I'm gonna go grab it for you guys, for you guys to see what I'm talking about. So I'll be right back. Um, I may not have to go over the table this time. That's, that's kind of awesome, it's kind of awesome. <gasps> but I did have to bend like a C shape. All right. Oh, my back. I need a chiropractor after all this. All right, so let's see what we got going on here. I have this scrap piece of uh, plywood. I picked one that I thought was the closest size to what we got going on here. So theoretically, see, and I'll give you guys kind of a close up to see what's going on here. 
So, let me back you on out just a hair. There we go. And move this forward. And move this light because it's all up in our faces. It's just shine right in our eyeballs. Like if we can light the back. There. So, this piece of plywood is almost there. Look at this gap, guys. I don't know. I, I'm so bad, but I almost feel like cutting a tiny strip and just kind of fillering it that way, you know? And the other thing is, look at this situation here. It's being blocked by here and it's being blocked by here. So if I were to cut a notch like that over here, we should be able to slide it forward to cover this gap. So I just gotta notch the thing and we can do it. Um, Bounty Hunter is saying, leftover from a garage shelving project? You know what, probably, probably. <laughs> um, and Carl is asking, if you didn't have vinegar, do you think lemon juice would work as well and not damage the wood? That's a good question. I have no idea of blood. It is acidic, you know, it is acidic, so it might work. So the things that I saw to try are, vinegar seem to be the number one mentioned thing. Acetone, so nail polish remover. That seems to be the best. It really dissolves that glue. A steam, a hot glue gun. Um, I think those were it. I'm looking, oh, isopropyl alcohol. Although, I don't know how well that, that would work. So the vinegar really worked. I think if it didn't work, the next thing I would go to is acetone uh, because that's really harsh stuff. Yeah, super harsh. So I think what I'm gonna do now is start this uh, situation here where, I don't know guys, what do you think? I mean, to cut a whole piece just because of this stupid little gap I mean, I can almost just, we have left over back here. Look, it, it like totally extends out. Like I can almost take a piece from back here and stick it up in here and call it a day. I mean, we can split the difference even maybe, but then that's kind of hard to like, you know, measure out perfectly. So something like that where it's, it's almost there. It's just almost there. But in any case, so I'll see what your guys' opinion is. So long as I notch this thing, I think we're good. We can like slip it through here and then cut the back off. So I'm gonna take a measurement and see, you know, what we got going on in terms of uh, notchery, you know, and, and all that. But in the meantime, let me see if I can find my, my pencil and all this commotion. Um, let's see. All this commotion. Oh, it's on the other side of the table. Be right back, beats. Be right back. And I'll take this dark blue one. So, a bounty hunter is saying, uh, oh no, uh, Kuzo Custom is saying, I posted a picture of the phone booth we have on our Twitter page and tag, okay, great, great, I'll take a look at that after, after we're done this debauchery here of what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll definitely take a, a look at your, uh, your post. So I'm just gonna march, mark in case I decide to use this this um, because the screw will go through it. I think we're good. I know I'm being like really bad. I should really just cut, cut a piece. But uh, I don't want to like cut a whole piece from a good piece and, and all that. So we'll see. So here's where I want to notch it. And let's measure how much I'm going to have to notch. Oh, some of you guys have, have uh, got ideas. I just split the difference, or if you rotated nine degrees, would it fit tighter? No, but we fixed our notching problem. Yeah, so it's skinny on this side. Um, you guys got me thinking though. Oh, but you were ahead of me. Um, Jealous, like, am I delusional or are you trying to still get that off? No, it's gone. It's gone. Now we're just trying to figure out how to get this uh, backing board onto the bottom to give it structural rigidity because I don't want to um, put the legs on this tiny, like, quarter inch piece right here. It's just not going to, to do it. Uh, and, uh, ooh. So, Bounty Hunter is saying split the difference and just use some quarter round molding to cover it. Ooh. We could use it. Um, I'm not so so worried about the appearance of the gap because this is going to be on the bottom. Um, it's more about when we pocket hole it with the gap, will we lose strength? And see, when there's a gap, we can't use glue either because there's a gap. 
So if we went like that on one side, we not only have it glued down, we could also pocket hole screw directly. And so here, uh, we would have to, you know, you can't really glue it down. I mean, maybe you can pocket hole it and then kind of just have it, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't extend enough into this piece, I don't think, to give it a secure hold. So, uh, and then I wouldn't worry about putting, you know, even if we had something like this, I really wouldn't worry about putting a, you know, uh, whatchamacallit. And then I'd also stick some pocket hole screws going in that way. So we'd have anchorage from here and from here, and then the back would just be like plain. So I'm, I know what I should do. Honestly, the right thing is to um, cut, cut the right wood, for God's sake, Rachel, you know. Miss, cutting corners, Rachel, here we go again. And then like you get halfway through the project and you're like, damn, should have done it right the first time, right? So I do have uh, bigger plywood pieces that are, uh, I'm just readjusting here. Gotta shift the knees around, right? I do have bigger pieces up on my, um, you know, my, my collection there that I can use. But this guy uh, starts to give you like an idea of like where we're kind of going with this. Because if I get this glued on this edge and this edge and then pocket hole screwed around, we're gonna have a very sturdy base with which to put the legs. That is not going to wanna, because it's gonna have a lot of weight on it and I don't want this to bust through, you know, this tiny little quarter inch plywood. So really this board with pocket hole screws and glue into these is really what's gonna be holding the top weight of the cabinet with that payphone that weighs like a baby elephant. So, I mean, I'm hoping it'll work, you know? The school legs, I think, will be sturdy. I mean, that's metal. I don't think that's going anywhere, so it's not going to be crushed. Whereas in this Atomic Age design, see those like little legs on the right? I think that if we were to have little legs like that, and then we were to put a phone booth in there, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. So, oh, wrong view. There we go. So, um, and some of you are saying, uh, turn the board. Uh, so yeah, we've already done that. I know you guys pop in and out, you know, so sometimes we have to uh, work our way back. But the one good thing is you guys can see it is seamless right here, seamless. So we can like pocket hole screw this really, really easily. So, and a bounty hunter is saying, don't know if you need to be worried about the side support when you have it secured in the front and back and it'll be resting on its legs. Maybe, maybe, you might be right. Yeah, it will be. Oh, but it's not, yeah, it's not supported on the back because the back, let me see on the inside what's going on. I only see quarter inch plywood that goes to the back. Like this little piece right here is only a quarter inch plywood, which is resting on another piece of quarter inch plywood. So let me see if there's actually another, you know, support board back here because this is just all quarter inch nonsense. So, um, take a peek. Wow, that's weaker than I thought. There is literally no thick, you know how there's like a thick piece like this in the back that you can, like a floorboard that's a three quarter inch somewhere where you can screw into? There is no such thing in the back here, which is very interesting. Yeah, basically all this is, is a quarter inch piece of plywood and then a quarter inch piece of plywood frame cut around it. So you have half an inch uh, right there. So we'd only have anchor on this side and this side, but no anchors going on on this side and this side. So I think, so we take a step forward and not a step forward and potentially two steps back, I should probably just cut a, you know, a correcto, a correct piece of wood and save this for something else, which uh, I know that we will. Now, in order for me to get to my piles of wood, I need to rearrange the shop yet, yet again. So you see my eyes gazing around and I'm just seeing if there's other potential pieces of wood that I won't have to. Ooh, I have an idea, guys. I have an idea. idea. Sit tight. Sit tight. Sit tight. I'm going to kind of crawl around you. Crawl around you and go back here. All right. 
because I will get that piece of wood, but we're gonna have to hang tight for a bit. So here's an idea. I have this, and obviously we'll cut it to size. So what if we anchor instead something like this, and so long as, let's see what's going on here. Oh, the light is tangled. My mood lighting. There we go. Put that there. It's a hunk of junk. All right, so the idea is the legs will go like this. So the one thing I can do is maybe we don't need a whole big board that goes. Maybe we only need like a slat or two that goes like that. So if we envision this, and I'll just kind of like rest him up here for now. So this is all this is going to need is just to anchor onto a few points. So an idea is to staple some wood on the outside such that it can screw in just like our rivets. We can use the same rivet holes. Uh, so all we would need is like maybe, you know, two slats of wood so we can rivet it, uh, not rivet it, but screw it in from these. Um, and um, Bounty Hunter is saying someone's getting a lawn mode. Yes, the lawn mowing company is here or leaves blown. I think we're having both. Yeah, so there's like a lawn doing the community uh, and things like that. So uh, yes, we'll definitely revisit this in a part three, but guys, we got this all naked and ready for legs. So um, Bill is saying slats might be easier and I concur. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have to cut slats which means I got to get wood, which is in a tough area. So I think this is, this is what I'm going to do. You guys get the general idea. So when we come back, either I will have a full piece of wood screwed in, or I will have a slat. You know, either case, there'll be some wood going up in here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and um, cut these and get it sanded down. The other thing I'm gonna do too is, and yes, we might do a part three on this, but I'll, I'll move it along a little bit before we return. So the other thing I'm gonna do too is this decor situation that we have going up here. So with this decor situation, I'm gonna go ahead and once the legs are cut, I'm gonna fill this in with our strips like that. You know, as, as an example, right? And then I'm going to putty wood filler over it so it's absolutely smooth just like our atomic age uh furniture right and these legs will be gone like that so i'm going to hide them with my hands so now we have like a perfect box now i know what some of you guys are thinking Ugh, this would have been just so much easier to build right but probably would have cost way more in materials to build this was 25 bucks so with a little, if you're willing to put in a little more elbow grease, you know, it, it, it'll cost a lot less in this case. So yes, converting the thrift store furniture. Plywood is not cheap, you know. Uh, to get the big four by eight hardwood plywood with a nice veneer finish is gonna run about 54 bucks a sheet. So, plus all the transportation if you don't have a pickup truck like me. Uh, so you will have to get it pre-cut and know your measurements ahead of time. So I'm still happy that I went uh, this direction. You know, we could have totally built it from scratch, but I'm kind of liking this, this direction. Uh, so, yep, I'll go ahead and wood putty it, get it all sanded down, and we will begin with the top hutch building. But we are going to revisit, you know, this bottom half, get everything, you know, together. So I'll post uh, a bonus stream date, you know, for that. We'll add, one, you know, another one this week. But in the meantime, guys, I'm hungry after all that. Yeah, I worked up an appetite. I don't know about you guys, maybe just watching with your eyeballs. You too worked up an appetite. So uh, Dave Beck is already throwing chicken drumsticks at me. Oh my gosh, you know, and a uh, bounty hunter breaks is, is saying Yeah, a couple of strips of one by six or one by eight attached towards the interior to allow the legs some surface to attach and secure the sides with dowels might work out easier and no need to notch. Yes, that's true. We wouldn't we wouldn't have to notch it. Uh, Carl's saying since it's based on a phone booth. Will it be larger on the inside? Um, will it be larger on the inside? So this phone booth is actually gonna be like a skinny version of a phone booth. We're pretty much building that thing on the right. 
Uh, but see where the drawers are? That's what we're working on today. And those gold legs are the um, school uh, legs that we're trying to add. So then what we're gonna do in a future stream, not this following stream, but the next one, is add that top hutch. Now that top hutch is going to be custom built unless I can find something that's similar in style to what we got going on. Um, so, oh, bounty hunter, he's saying he had lunch uh, already. Uh, and now Dave is, is throwing me what looks to be grilled cheese uh, sandwiches, which I, I love me my grilled cheeses, you know, so I'm super jealous. Oh, and now Cruiser is throwing tacos at me. Oh, now I don't know what to eat. I'm, I think I'm just gonna like order it all and have like one of each. <laughs> and uh, Dave Beck is saying, tacos, yummy. So yes, I'm gonna go grab a snack and then watch social media. But if you have not joined Discord, that's where all these discussions happen. And I post uh, pictures Oh, progress picture sometimes I do get stuck I post pictures and it's a lot easier to do through there where we're all there and it's moves in real time than across social media and then on different platforms having to unite everybody is a little bit tougher it's totally free I'm like a lot of you guys I don't want to sign up for something else and have to remember another stupid password yeah I'm, I'm, I'm with you, trust me. Uh, but it's a lot more fun to talk that way and a lot more convenient. So there is a channel, um, if you don't know how Discord works, it's like a live chat forum. And on the left, you'll see a whole bunch of what are called channels, but really think of, of them as forum boards. So there's one called Payphone Upcycle. That's where all everything about this project is taking place. Uh, you'll see some of my initial thoughts and some of the goings back and forth with some of the people you see right here on this uh, stream. So thanks for, for joining. And if you guys haven't checked out, we have a totally different project going on for our Wrench Army members. And that is our dragon battle dragon special effects plasma ball uh, where we get to work with some high voltage there some clay modeling some different skills so if you haven't checked it out check it out on the page it helps support all these streams but you're still free to join us every monday and wednesdays now we're doing two streams uh, a month no not a month a week I'm like delirious because I'm thinking of like tacos and like grilled cheeses now. And I think I'm going to combine a taco and a grilled cheese, a grilled taco cheese. Oh, yes, yes. So I will catch you guys uh, later before I start just like babbling. Because yeah, you know, babbling about crazy fantasy stuff. Because yes, my brain is depleted. And I need nutrients. So guys, thanks for joining me. All of your feedback was super helpful. See how far we got? how far everybody starts chiming in ideas and something's gonna work. So get on Discord and stay tuned for the next bonus stream. We're gonna tack another one on. So I'll catch you guys later, bye.